Hey, what's up, everybody? Marcos Viegas being joined with Keith One Time Thurman, who's fresh off his win over Mario Barrios over the weekend in Las Vegas. First time you've been in the ring, Keith, in, in well, I want to say more than two years. I told you after the fight, I thought you looked good, but I asked you, did you feel rusty? Now, uh, I know you didn't get a chance to fully explain that, but how did you feel? And, and did you feel rusty in there with Barrios? Uh, I didn't feel like rusty, rusty, but, you know, um, just some of the gusto that I should have, uh, I didn't have. And I feel like, obviously, I trained really hard. Obviously, um, I had a very solid approach to my training status um, leading up to the fight. I always tell people, when you watch athletes perform, especially in the boxing ring, what you are witnessing is the outcome of their preparation for this fight, right? Oh, so-and-so got tired by the sixth round. Well, he didn't just get tired by the sixth round. He was getting tired weeks ago. You know, he never got past his cardiovascular, he never got over his hurdles, his cardiovascular hurdles. Then he got pushed in a fight and it's evident, right? It's evident. So uh, at, at the end of the day, um, a lot of stuff that I did in training, I was able to do in the fight. Uh, so that felt good, but it also showed me what I was missing, right? Um, that killer dog is just really something I need to awaken. Um, something with age, you know, you get less um, um, confrontational as you get older, because you just know the consequences. I ain't trying to go to jail. I'm not trying to just fight no stranger for no reason. You know, I'm not getting paid to punch this man in the face, whatever you you get a little less aggressive as we age but i need to just hone us in on 36 minutes it's, it's only one performance 36 minutes of of all-out intensity um so i didn't feel rusty but i feel like the only rust i had was me not pushing for the stoppage like if i if um but I, I, like I said, in the post-fight conference, I blame my sparring partners. I'll hit these, I'll hit these guys, these fighters, and then I'm, I take it easy. What I should do is hit them, get them out of there and say, yo, looks like you done, rotate, next one, next one. And when I start getting through the fighters and I start, you know, getting through my sparring partners, then obviously I should be getting through my opponent, um, especially if it's just one man standing in front of me and not four to uh, five sparring partners like I had this training camp. But um, all in all, uh, great fight. Uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was fun being in there. I liked the challenge that Mario brought to the table. I thought he would do more. But in reflection, I did hit him early. And everybody's got a game plan until they get hit. So the coaches could have been telling him one thing. But his mind could have been telling him another thing. Like, be careful. You're stepping into Thurman. Be careful. He already rocked you. Be careful. It'd be different if I didn't land the big punch early, you know but I didn't land the big punch. So I'm not in his head, you know, and the only fighter that I've seen take Keith Thurman's punch and really just keep coming was Sean Porter. So that's that. That's funny that you mentioned Sean. I talked to Sean yesterday and he told me that um, we did like a career retrospective with him. And I asked him, who's the hardest guy that's ever hit you? And he's like, Keith. And I'm like, did he make you see stars? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I want to ask him if I got him with a good one. Like, ask him. I'm like, all right, I'll ask him. So, you know, piggyback, piggybacking on that, uh, how hard did Sean hit you in that fight? Did he did he make you see any sort of fuzziness or stars in that fight? No, his best punch was in the 10th round, and he didn't even – nobody knew he landed it. Like, it was just a simple little we – were, we were going back and forth. He jumped in, boom, boom, overhand right, right on the temple, and I poker-faced him hard, you know, boom. What's good, Sean? What's good? And he's looking at me, looking at me. He ain't know. I was, wah, I was buzzing. <laughs> you know, I was buzzing. Uh, 10 to 12 seconds go by. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm back at it. And I said, well, he missed that opportunity. He ain't even know. It's gone. You know, back back in action. Boom, boom, boom. And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was a real short, uh, short overhand right. He had some looping overhand rights after mauling me and stuff like that. That's not the stuff that, uh, that hurt. Um, he just got that one punch. I think it's about the 10th round. I just remember because it's hard to forget when you get rocked. Uh, you can always have a good blue blueprint as it was it in the middle. Was it in the early rounds? This was towards the end. Um, but you know, I don't, it wasn't even that impressive to the judges either. Cause it just, 
came off of my head. Boom, just a little dashing, simple punch, but it did more than uh, what it appeared to do on that day. So on your end, what's needed to get back to that Keith Thurman? What, what, what do you still want to incorporate? What do you feel you still need to do in order to get back to that? Um, I think I had a, a great sparring uh, for this camp. Uh, just uh, the way we, we kept it all in rotation, a lot of young guys. Um, so definitely that ring work. In my off season, I need to spend more time in the ring. Sometimes I don't spend time in the ring because uh, we go hard, man. It, it goes back from my Ben Getty days. Like, like we be doing that doghouse stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, it's not talked about a lot, but fighters can get beat up in the gym, man. You know, um, you can take too many punches in the gym before you ever um, get into the fight. So I think what I need to do is maybe focus on my reflexes, maybe focus on my counter punching, um, setting things up with my jab. Uh, I got to find a way to dial it down a little bit, maybe 50 percent, 50 percent on the power and and definitely um, 85 to 100 percent speed you know, uh, where I'm really just focusing on fast jabs. Uh, my jab was landing uh, throughout the fight when I got close enough. Uh, Mario Barrios has a good jab, but he wasn't really putting the stick on me as much as I thought he would. I thought he was going to, uh, that was going to be a big part of his strategy, but um, he was very conservative. I think maybe they acknowledge that in my past fights, I've been a pretty decent counter puncher. Um, he didn't give me a lot to counter off of. I try to give him some opportunities. He was very conservative. And then, you know, eventually when he let go, he would just let go and get right back on the guard. So um, I just didn't get a lot of reads in the fight like I wanted to, to try to see how I can place punches in between his punches, which made me have to just go back to the uh, be first, be last kind of um, scenario in boxing, which I don't mind. You want me to be first, I'll be first. Um, so, you know, it was it was an interesting fight. It didn't play out the way that I uh, was predicting uh, ahead of time. But I just went with the flow, saw what he was giving me and uh, just manipulated the rounds and showed him that I'm the better, uh, more skilled boxer. I got way more experience and uh, he just wasn't, you know, ready for that boxing lesson. You know what I like uh, what you did in the fight was uh, that three punch combination that you had. You, you'd go jab straight and then you had like an upper jab or sometimes an uppercut. And yes. it, it reminded me a, a lot, too, of, uh, you know, that's what Manny would do at times, too, would be the, the three punch and then that little quick jab. But I, I felt like you had a lot of success with that punch. And I think uh, maybe one of those punches is what uh, busted up his nose, too. Yeah, uh, the, the, the one two left uppercut, you know, depending on the distance, it can be turned into an extended jab. Uh, but I just like to call it the, the one, two, three left uppercut status. You know, um, it's really the same fundamentals. It's based off of the one, two, and then the three is normally the hook, right? But Barrios was keeping his hands. He was keeping his, his hands by his ears, and he was protecting his temples very well. So I said, okay, well, if I just do simple combos, this kid's going to block all night, and he might look like Keith Thurman can't hit him. And I'm like, well, that's a waste of my time. So if his hands are here, then I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to get over. I'm going to look at it, but then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to place it. I call it inside and outside. I'm going to place my punch on the inside of his forearm so I can get in between this look here. See, so the third punch comes on the inside. And then if he ever makes an adjustment and starts tightening up, then maybe I can rearrange and go back on the outside so you know i call that inside outside because you can't protect both at the same time you have to commit to one so when when fighters know like man i don't want thurman to hit me with them wide shots you know hit me up in my temple i don't want to get rocked that's fine i'll just go boom 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 you know sometimes you go one two down the pipe and then the upper ends up being right down the pipe you know, you can put the one, I can put the one, two and the upper in the same box, you know, or I can go one, two around, make you hold one hand up and then go in between again. So box, outer box, you know, and I'm just looking for those kind of angles all the time. I'm, uh, that's the whole purpose of combination punching is to attack at different angles. You know, like you said, Pacquiao was always very good at that. 
uh, in our fight, I remember him hitting me with a with a little hook and an uppercut, little pop pop. Yeah, know, that's his. Uh, uh, he's pop, done pop. that time and time again. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because it's it's two different angles happening within a millisecond, and majority of the time, one's going to get through. It's 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 over a fifty percent chance that you're going to land a punch, especially the, the faster you can throw the um the both angles in combination. Somebody like Pacquiao with his speed, he, he knows he's going to sneak in that uppercut. Might not be the biggest punch all the time, but after a while, you know, it might bust your nose. Um, it, it might rock you a little bit or just be something to give the judges something to look at, boom, snap the head, boom, snap the head. So that's what I was giving him. You know, uh, when I throw a combination, I want to leave, I want to, I want to leave with something. So boom, boom, bah, I was just taking that away. Um, I land on his chin once hurt my knuckle in about the second or third round. It was, it was, it's still a little sensitive today. I've, I've been, uh, taking care of it this week, a little bit of therapy, a little bit of ice treatment. Uh, it's getting better. Uh, but, I did notice it and it made me it made me not want to throw the punch, even though I knew the punch was there because all of a sudden uh, this was getting a little sensitive on me. But the punch was there all night. I did like that combo. Uh, you're fine then uh, from the fight. No injuries. Just the, the, the sore knuckle, the bruised knuckle. Yeah. So soreness. Yeah. Same knuckle. But this one's on the bottom. This one's on the top. And uh, they're they're both, you know, subsiding. Uh, I still haven't gotten the. Um, the MRI. I plan on doing that uh, next week, but uh, I, I don't think it's nothing outside of uh, just regular uh, bruising from you know from from landing. You know, if 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 I wasn't landing the punches, my hands would be fine. But we were able to find plenty of shots in there uh, that night, and uh, yeah, so it, it got him, but a little bit got me too. You got uh, some of your fans, the, those Keith Thurman fans, during the fight, you got them a little nervous. He, he connected with a body shot on you, and it seemed like, you know, it, it did stun you or hurt you a little bit. How hard was that body shot? How hurt were you when that happened? Uh, it wasn't that hard. It just hit the right spot. Uh, like I said in post-fight, my stomach was already feeling sensitive that day. Um I got to talk to my nutritionist about this sensation that I was feeling. Um, it might be due to poor diet after the weigh-ins. Uh, I might be giving myself a toxic overload. You can see my face is already filling out. We've been having pancakes every morning, boy. We have the pancake, boy. I got a, <laughs> with, the, with a muffin on the side. Yeah, you know, little extra got, muffins. Boy, I got my cake <laughs> and ice cream, boy. You know, so <laughs> I'm going uh, to have to get moving. Uh and my downtime, I look forward to doing a real uh, fast, whether it's like a vegan fast or or maybe like one of them 10 days water fast, uh, juice fast. You know, that's those things are stuff that I like to do for my body, but I can never do it in um, in training time because the we have to push the body so much. You have to get the certain level of nutrients and exertion at the same time and, and, and more well-balanced diet. But right now with a little bit of inactivity in my horizon, um, I can go on a more extreme diet, something like a juice fast or a water fast. So I plan on during this vacation time, uh, executing that and not being out here having pancakes every day, but one more day, the waffles on their way. Uber Eats is already coming. It's on the way. You got <laughs> We got waffles and acai bowl this time. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I remember uh, you mentioning that and you saying that now, like uh, maybe it was already hurting from before. You think maybe it has something to do with with um, the the weight pull. Uh, does it make you maybe think if you were to move up to 154, you wouldn't have that problem? Do you, do you think it's like a weight cut issue? Um, I, I it, it has to be either related to the weight cut or the poor diet, man, Af after the weight cut. And um, I lean a little bit towards poor diet just because I eat what I want after the weigh-ins and I barely get to eat before the weigh-ins. So I think there's just an overload, um, kind of like an overload of, of toxicity, um, you know, alcohol poisoning, everything in the body gets filtered through the liver. So it doesn't have to be something as extreme as alcohol. It can be something as simple as white flour that you haven't had for, you know, 10 weeks. You know, if you're, if you're Keith Thurman, you haven't had it for 10 weeks. You, you know, you, you haven't had a, a, um, a donut or any, any form of um, dessert 
um, and a lot of heavy sugar loads, you know, whether it's coming from um, white carbohydrates or if it's coming from um, white sugars, you know, so e either or um, within that 24 hour time, the, the body's trying to digest, you know, because your body runs on a cycle, you know, or sleep cycles every day, your endocrine system, um, your, your hormones are uh, moving around every day. There's so much happening every day. Uh, so, you know, I think that I'm very sensitive when I reach that stage after my long diet and something as soon as 24 hours, my body can be having adverse reactions. Like, Hey, this is a, you gave me a big job today. Like, you know, um, I had a light work. I've been working light, you know, and you've been eating clean and all of a sudden you want to bring in the army, you know, of, of bad nutrition. And I just think it's a uh, taxing my, my system. So, um, hopefully, hopefully I can figure it out, uh, and, and work it out, uh, for the future this year, because, you know, a, a well-placed body shot is a well-placed body shot, but it was a little tender. I knew before the fight, I said, you don't want to get hit here today, boy. I said, I, I can already feel it. You don't even want to get hit here today, you know? So, uh, it is what it is. You know how I am, man. If, if the body shot was, was hard enough, you know, everybody lands a good one, but they don't land um, a big enough one. If it was any, if it was harder, Thurman would go down. You know, um, I haven't gone down throughout my career. Um, they're hit me with nice body shots. They're just not um, big enough. So, you know, I'm gonna keep taking it. You know, given that, that you had this fight, um, that uh, the future uh, for you, obviously, a lot of more big fights. But how soon do you want to get back in, Keith? And, and do you think, based on how you felt, you're ready for a, a title shot? Or do you still want to get one more in just to get that rhythm back, just to get it, all the kinks out? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. You know, it's still a little too early. Um, I'm, I wouldn't oblige a stay busy fight just because it feels good. Let's stay busy. You know, I mean, it felt great. Uh, got a lot of positive feedback from the fans. Everybody loved my performance. They love what I bring into the ring. They understand that, you know, Keith Thurman is a truly educated fighter. Um, my boxing ability, my, um, the way I will stalk you, you know, um, you know, I'm just about great fights, you know? Um, so I love all the positive feedback we got. Um, it feels good to be back in the ring. Uh, I think there's room to improve. The, the weird sensation is there's no, there hasn't been momentum. There's been all these big layoffs and stuff. And then in 2019, I fought Jose Cito Lopez. Then I fought Manny Pacquiao. And I got to admit, even that year, when I was in the ring with Manny Pacquiao that night, like one fight didn't really feel like enough, you know? Um, so I wouldn't be obliged to step in the ring again. But the fighter in me loves great fights. And, and, you know, if I see a great contract in a really big fight that's exciting for the welterweight division, Keith Thurman cannot say no. I just don't know how to do it. Um, I just live for this sport. I live for the action. I'm addicted to the game, as they say. Um, so it, it's hard. But I was looking at the count. And if we look at Ugas Spence and we look at the next time that they're going to fight and maybe when I can be in contention for the winner, um, you're really looking at September, you know? Um, and that was just off of some simple math that I gave it, you know, so is Keith Thurman okay with fighting, not fighting till September, you know, if it's for the winner of Uga Spence, it might be worth the wait. Um, <clears throat> but if those boys, um, want some type of title defense, who knows if there's going to be a mandatory rematch, yada, yada, yada. Um, injuries. All the, yeah, injuries, yeah, all the, um, there, there's certain things that kind of sound like Thurman might not want to wait uh, till September. Obviously, we can wait till after this fight, um, but I might just have to get into the ring and, and, and stay active, you know. Uh, of course, we know that there is a, a champion um, looking for opponents, uh, Bud Crawford, you know, um, and maybe that fight can happen before September, most likely. Um, but that's why we just got to see what, what we're going to do this year. Um, I'm just so happy to be back, happy to be getting this positive feedback. Um, it just felt good to be in there and, and be classy, you know, um, but as much as I love my boxing skills and my abilities, 
you know, I want to just come back to being a threat in the welterweight division. So uh, I do think if I was to take it slow, that um, I should be able to fine tune myself um, and better preparation for these undefeated world champions that are currently out there in the boxing world today. But like I said, man, I like a great fight. So we're just going to have to see what happens. And I love I love being the man that brings some of the most exciting fights in the welterweight division. Ugas uh, Spence is a tremendous fight at 147. It's, it's the top dogs fighting the top dogs. You know, I can, you know, I can bark up the tree and I can say a Thurman fights better. You know, you've heard me say it before, but at the end of the day, uh, this is what boxing's about, man. Uh, great fighters fighting great fighters. I love the matchup. Um, I would love to face both fighters, but you know, this is, this is what has manifested with the shifting, you know, Thurman loses to Pacquiao, Pacquiao loses to Ugas, and, and, and now this shifting has occurred, which has allowed this to be the big fight that it is. Otherwise, if it was Spence fighting Ugas when Ugas didn't have a world title, we would say it's a good matchup, but it wouldn't have the significance that it carries today uh, with Ugas being a, a current champion after the um, Pacquiao um, victory there. So um, it's, it's, it's just great. Uh, to see the welterweight division, just having the best fighters fight each other. There's only two names outside of Ugas for Errol Spence, and that's Crawford and Thurman. Um, to say that, you know, he's fought everybody um, at, at the division in his time and just dominate, you know, be the undisputed champion of the world. Um, you know, so no matter what, man, it, it, I think it's just a beautiful time in boxing, beautiful time in the sport, great time for the welterweight division. Um, and I'm just trying to, you know, figure out where I fit in the mix, man. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm right here, you know, I'm right here, you know, but at the end of the day, uh, it's one fight at a time and we just got to see what happens overall and, and let, and, and we got to read the fine print. What's going to happen after this fight. Like I said, rematch policy, no rematch policy, uh, uh that's going to affect the welterweight division as well. But I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to be in here. It's been a long time. I'm tired of all the layoffs. Uh, so let's stay busy. Staying busy might be more important um, at this stage than the big, big fights because I'm only going to get older and I need to stay sharp. So I'll do whatever it takes uh, to make that a reality this year so that when the big fight does come, because it's going to come sooner or later, that your boy one time will be ready. No, speaking of uh, Crawford, and, and I'm glad uh, you brought it up because, uh, you know, you, you just mentioned like, yeah, you know, you would like to fight. Uh, it really comes down to the particulars of uh, the contract and the person all that, uh, because a, a lot of fans have said, like, Thurman does not want to fight Terrence Crawford. Yeah, that's not true, man. Look, at the end of the day, uh, it's just boxing, you know, um, you win, you lose, you draw. Um this is blood, sweat, and tears. So what people don't really understand about Keith Thurman is just how much I live this life, you know? Um, that's why I don't let the word play really affect me. You know, uh, once upon a time, Thurman, sometime Thurman, um, you know, uh, they were saying not this time, you know? So at the end of the day, man, I work hard, you know? You, some people see it in my training, um, some people have been blessed to witness it by coming into the camps, you know, back in the day when you guys used to be able to bring your videos, come into the gym and stuff and really see how hard I work. You know, I don't travel to a lot of other training camps, but Ben Getty used to always tell me, if you want to be a champion, you got to train like a champion. So when I'm in the gym, my regiment is the hardest regiment there is. Nobody's out doing Keith Thurman in the gym you know, um, not in my gym, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not fighters out there, some, some gym rats, some workaholics, boy, there's people who go to they, to they practically drop dead, you know, make, make every muscle cramp up before you leave the building. It's like, oh, shoot, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, at the end of the day, man, I have a very good, um, strategy when it comes to getting in shape. Uh, I've been boxing my whole life. I had over a hundred amateur fights, I'm just not new to this, man. I'm very comfortable in the ring. Um, I'm very comfortable being put under pressure. I'm very comfortable even when I'm not that comfortable. You know, I mean, I don't panic when, when they hurt me to the body. I don't panic when they uh, hurt me with a headshot. Um, it is what it is, man. If Terrence Crawford is the guy to 
to slap up Keith Thurman, then I'll find out the day that I fight Terrence Crawford. But I know for a fact that um, I'm very talented. I know how to protect myself. I know how to weave, uh, duck, stutter, faint, and uh, just play the game, man. You know, I'm out here, um, you know, I'm out here like them kids on Madden, boy. We out here. I know the tricks of the trade, boy. <laughs> I know what play to run. You know, I see the hole. We take it. You know, I mean, I'm just very educated in the sport. That's why I love it so much um, is because I've seen my growth, man, from a from a child, from a kid who was not the best in the gym uh, to being, you know, uh, one of the best fighters in the world. You know, um, there's, there's just been so much growth. Um, I believe in growth. I think I still have potential to grow. Um, it's all about the effort that you put into it. And that's what 2022 is about. You know, I got the uh, um, the new shirts from from the motto that I came up with, you know, be good, be great, be a champion. And, you know, um, against Mario Barrios, I'll say that was good. And you see me again, you're going to see some, you're going to see some that's better than that. So I should look pretty great. And then regardless of if that fighter is a champion or the next fighter is a champion, it's in my near future, you're going to see Keith one time Thurman, the champion of the world once again. So be good, be great, be a champ, you know, uh, always living a dream. You know, you got a dream out here. Every single day we wake up, you didn't know you were going to wake up today. You know, um, tomorrow's not guaranteed. You know what I mean? So when you're out here, man, you got to dream big and you got to work hard and, uh, and, and try to manifest it, man. And, and I just love the sport of boxing and I'm still out here dreaming big dreams of, of dominating the welterweight division. And that's what this year is all about for me. Just put myself in position to um, be back on top. Let me ask you this. It might sound like a nerdy question, but when you look at Crawford, like how, how can you like beat the guy like that? I'm not saying you can't, but I'm saying like given how he's able to switch so easily and he's able, able to counter punch so well, like what, what do you see there in Crawford? That's like a potential weakness, not, not just for you, but for any fighter. Oh, well, you know, it's really, it's the same as, anybody who has that kind of style. So like the number one thing that stood out in your analogy was counter punching, right? So the thing about counter punching is a counter puncher is Danny Garcia, right? So when you're committed to counter punching, what you just said, what, what, you, what, what you just really signed up for is saying, I'm the guy who's going to throw second. Okay. So that's the first thing. The first thing about counter punching means that I'm going to let you throw at me, then I'm going to throw at you, okay? So it, it might work out and it might plan out good, but if the first guy can manipulate and offset the timing of the second guy, then he's going to be looking for a punch that he's not going to be able to time, you know? Um, like I said, Danny Garcia. When I fought Danny Garcia, all I was interested in was messing up his timing, putting, getting off first, one, two punches, maybe three punches because he was a big, strong counter puncher. So, you know, we saw what happened to Amir Khan when he threw a four punch combo. He got hit by one big punch. So you got to understand that. How fast is this guy? You know, Terrence Crawford, we know he has tremendous speed. So I might not be able to get three punch combos off. I might have to just pop up, get in with two, boom, boom, and disappear. Boom, boom, and pick a new angle and smother. And then maybe rip something off and then get around. Maybe I got to hold a Terrence Crawford, hold him down, pin him down after a few combos. The way Floyd used to pop, shot, and hold. Pop, hold, pop, hold. You know, um, there's, there's a lot of different strategies, you know, uh, on how to minimize somebody's output. You know, uh, and if they're going to be a counter puncher like he was against Sean Porter, that's why he didn't have a good start. He wasn't working behind the jab. He wasn't being first and and he had a bad start to that fight. But then slowly he was able to he was able to place his jab, find his punches a little bit. And then his counter started coming in the later rounds. Right. So. Um, so at the end of the day, he, he's a threat, you know, southpaw, right handed countering from all positions great speed you know coming up from the lighter weights um more power than you expect from a lightweight because he's because he's lanky um he's got great strength training um 
he, he, he's not that he's not that boy that we saw in the amateurs when I was growing up with Terrence Crawford. He, he's a grown man lifting um, powerful weights. Um, he's got strong legs, strong upper body, and um, just a well-rounded, uh, great fighter. That's what we we love when we see him in the ring. Um, but I think you can get him with output. You know, obviously, you just combination punching, output. Uh, if he's going to focus on the uh, if he's going to focus on all those counter punching all the time. And then at the end of the day, uh, you just got to have your defense tight with Terrence because he is a sharp shooter. He was a tremendous amateur like myself. Well, I used to see him at the Nationals all the time. Um, you know, he used to be in contention with Saddam Ali and um, uh, Mikey Garcia and, and fighters of, of those rankings growing up. So, uh, uh, and they, they've had some decent careers and, and Terrence is, is, is still undefeated, man. So, you know, I tip my hat off to him. I got so much respect for him because I know where he comes from because it's from the same thing that I come from uh, when we used to be fighting for trophies. We used to be fighting for medals and um, we used to fight just to make our mama and our daddies proud, you know, uh, and, and now we're these big time fighters. So, you know, I, I respect them 100 all the way through uh, and, you know, uh, if we if we can have a fight, you know, so be it. it. It'll be a great fight. Heck yeah, it'll be a hell of a fight. Um, and I know the the whole boxing world wants to see that fight. Another big fight that got announced, Keith. I just got to ask you uh, about this. Ugas and Spence, um, great fight. A, a lot of people uh, feel that it's going to be a competitive fight. What does Ugas need to do to win? What does Spence need to do to win? Oh. Well, it's actually interesting, you know, because they both have great jabs, right? They both they both got long jabs too, um, which is which is interesting because we've seen how Errol Spence can dominate with his jab when he when he has that long jab over somebody like um, Mikey Garcia and you know the way he um, dominated Bundu and um, the way he beat Lamont Peterson, right? So we, we've seen what he can do with that jab, but now he's going to be trying to pin somebody down who also has a long reach and a long jab and a long right hand, you know, uh, and also somebody who's Cuban, who's very good at spacing, who's very good at spacing and uh, ring management. Yeah, so, you know, Errol trying to pin down Ugas might not be an easy task, um, you know, and Ugas, we've never really seen him sit on the ropes a lot. Um, so is, is er Errol dominates very well when fighters end up being pinned up on the ropes. Um, he throws some nice body shots mixed in with a nice hook up top. And then he'll give you that hook up. You know, he can give you that hook up top and the solar plex shot or the body shot with the with the hook up top. Um, and he's got real good mix up game when he's got fighters on the ropes. You know, Ugas, we've seen him with his Cuban style spacing. Um, you know, he started, a, he's a slow starter. He, um, I think both fighters are slow starters and they're both good finishers. So I really think the fight's going to get started in the seventh round. Real talk, real talk. I, you know, I think the fight's going to happen from round six, seven, eight, and nine. I think those are going to be where the fight is won. Um, so hopefully both fighters don't do too little in the opening rounds. You got to see who really wants to take it from the opening rounds but just seeing their styles um i i think they're gonna i think they're gonna warm up and then get the engine going like a and horse then, race and, and then and then at the end of the day who knows um it, it might go all the way to that final bell you know because this is the biggest fight of both fighters careers and once when the fight really gets started um neither one's going to be able to stop till it's all said and over so i don't expect for a quick start but I expect for a very strong finish from both of these fighters. It's just in their making. Um, Ugas, we saw him do a little bit more against Pacquiao. You know, he he fought Sean Porter. He didn't get the decision. He's fell short from victory on a night that he was capable of winning. We saw a tremendous skill from him. We saw him um, backing Sean up and Sean not being capable of doing a lot in the fight. But because he was the champion, he threw flurries from time to time. Ugas let him off the ropes countless number of times uh you know uh ugas just didn't 
get the victory in the judges' eyes. Fans have an opinion, but we got to impress these judges, right? So he, he, he's been scorned. He's been scorned in that fashion. And I think he knows that if you want to be champion of the world, you got to let these hands go and you got to, you got to do something for the fans, for the judges and for everybody in the world to say you are the champion. So if, if he really wants to put it down for uh, Cuba, you know, I don't know the statistics. I, I've been questioning them. You should do your research. It's going to be something to talk about. Has there ever been an undisputed Cuban uh, champion in the history of boxing? No, there hasn't. There hasn't. This is going to, this is a monumental moment right here, right now. You know, it, that's what boxing is all about. That's what I love about boxing is boxing history and, and finding new found barriers. You know, I always talk about how Manny Pacquiao, what he brought to the sport, he brought a whole country, the Philippines, you know, it's, um, and now they love boxing. They can't get enough of boxing, you know? So um, it's just tremendous. What, what a singular athlete can do for his nation, put him on the map. Uh, Udenis Ugas is, is going to be having the Cubano flag flying over him very high, very prideful leading up into this match. And um, he should and, and, and he should carry the pride of his ancestors and walk into that ring and, and, and show his warrior spirit to the best of his potential. You know, and then um, Errol Spence just wants to dominate in the same fashion that he has. He hasn't has a blemish on his record yet. He wants to dominate once again, hold it down, talk his ish man down, blah, blah, blah. And um and do his thing. And, and we all believe in him. We all believe that he's very capable of doing it, but we've seen Ugas has been a challenging opponent for many, many, many fighters. He hasn't fought a fighter of this caliber. So let's just see uh, what can happen on this up and coming bout. It's going to be a great night of boxing, baby. Yeah. It's going to be a good fight. What's the most likely thing that happens in your opinion in that fight? Do you think it goes like split decision? Do you think arrow might be a little too big, too active? Do you think maybe he gets surprised by Ugas's think- counterpunching? I think, I think they're going to be very conservative. Um, I think they're going to be staring at each other, sizing each other up. And then I think out of nowhere, bombs are coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, because, because it's hard, man, to stand in that ring and have all that testosterone champion versus champion. Like, man, you got to make a statement, man. I mean, Maybe they can stay composed. Maybe Ugas just box smart. Maybe Arrow just tries to box smart. But I know Arrow, you know, uh, he even even the way he was swinging at Danny Garcia, he was trying to take Danny's head off. But Danny, you know, after I caught Danny in the first round, he wouldn't let me hit him with the big swingers anymore because um, his eyes were wide open. And he's a counter puncher, which means he knows how to get out the way and try to throw back at you. But he was just too slow for me. He was too slow for Errol. Um, but the way they fought each other, they were really throwing a lot of big punches at one another. Um, that's one reason why a lot of punches didn't land in that fight. So I think Errol should just tighten up, um, take away from the power, and just focus on landing some punches. And then once you get into the rhythm of landing punches, go ahead and increase the power once again and drop it on them. Um, like I said, I, I think Errol's a very capable fighter. I, I favor him in the fight, but uh, like I, we, we, we talk about Ugas, he's taken on so many challengers in the welterweight division. He's, he's made upsets in the past when they thought he was the underdog. Um, and that's just the kind of fighter that Ugas is. He's a very capable, well-rounded, uh, Cuban boxer who knows the sport of boxing, who has good defense, good spacing, a long jab. He just fundamentally sound at 147. Um, he just got a great frame to compete with with the, with all the fighters um, in the welterweight division. So you know, I think I think if Spence can hurt Ugas, then he he can um, uh, he he can make a difference in the fight. Uh, but it, but if he just lets Ugas continue to use his defense and his spacing, um, it, it might be we might have a lot of toss up rounds. That's the one thing that that I'm a little skeptical of right now is I I want to see like my fight. You know, I, w- I want to see dominant rounds. I want to see somebody dominate. You know, I think this has the potential to have a lot of uh, give or take kind of rounds. So it's up to the fighters to show who wants to stand out. Who, you know, who can block, who can sneak in the, the power shots, the, the, the better combinations and, and then get in and get out, you know, they're, they're going to have to prove themselves on that night. 
Um, I, I know everybody should be getting excited right now, and the boys should be uh, very focused um, in their camps uh, to come, you know. So, so let's just see what happens. Oh, man, it, it's going to be a good fight. Thank you, uh, thank you for your analysis there, uh, Keith. The one last thing, this last thing that I got to ask you because you're just so great at breaking fights down. Uh, Canelo is going to fight Bavall, I think, now. And then go into Gennady Golovkin. A lot of people don't want to fight Bavall because he's tricky. Are you familiar with Bavall's style at all? Uh, no. no. Refresh my memory. Who is this man? Dimitri Bavall is a, a world champion at 175 pounds. Has a really, really weird, tricky style. He, he's, it, it's very like the timing is like offbeat. Like you know, it's not a a typical like that. That it, he's like really offbeat. Uh, very, very accomplished amateur. Had like 300 Canelo. fights, only lost like 15 times. Canelo's tricky, my man. Canelo's yeah. tricky, you know. Uh, <laughs> Canelo's tricky. What's up, baby? What's up? <laughs> Come here real quick. Come to daddy. Come to daddy this morning. Uh-uh. Yeah, Canelo, uh, Canelo's tricky. She's so know? cute, Keith. Yeah, Hello. <laughs> Hi, Nana. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Canelo loves a great challenge, you know. Uh, he loves a great fight. He loves up in his, alcohol, his accolades in the sport of boxing. So, you know, uh, we all tip, tip our hats to him. Nobody would expect this out of Canelo when he first came to America. Um, you know, a lot of people saw him as a green um, little, little padded record. You know, it, it, the real critics, you know, nobody, everybody else loved him knocking people out, but a lot of people saw that he was being groomed. Um, Floyd showed that he had room for improvement, but boy, has he improved since then. So, you know, that's the stuff that I respect in this sport is for fighters to understand when they're not complete, you know, and that they work towards that completion, you know, and so it's very admirable what, what he's been doing in his career and, um, you know, I mean, he's at that stage where he just picks fights for the fans and everybody everybody already pretty much um, loves Canelo. So he almost can't do no wrong, man. Uh, so let's just see what he does, man. Uh, he, he, uh, I, well, I was hoping for the Charlo fight. I like the Charlo fight because I know Charlo is going to come to we him. We love the Charlo. We want the Charlo fight, man. Yeah. We, want, we want better fights in his division. He's, he's hopping around. He's, I mean, he learns from Floyd. What can we say, you know? Um, he, he, he's one of the highest paid boxers in the sport of boxing today, um, uh, respectively for many different reasons. And, you know, when, when you have the luxury of doing what you want to do and getting paid the way you want to get paid, and you don't have to be forced to fight the competition that's really out there. Um, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You know, you're going to get critics who talk about, he should be in the ring with Charlo. He should do this. He should do that. That's cool. You come be a world-class boxer. You come make the fights. You come do this and that. You do it, you know. And at the end of the day, it's it's really tough to be in a to be in such a um um Madonna uh um the status that Canelo has, the status that Floyd had, the status that Canelo has in the sport today. That's a very hard status to have. So of course, once when a fighter has it, you know you can. It's hard to blame them for holding on to that status. And doing what what we do, this is where I'm still in Vegas, baby. I'm still in Vegas. You know, when when we when we're here in Vegas, we're performers. OK, we didn't come here for the liquor. We didn't come here for the nightlife. We came here to perform, you know, and that's what Canelo is. And he's constantly doing it um, and he's satisfying a lot of fans. He might not be satisfying every fan, but yeah, y'all going to y'all still going to tune in to that Canelo fight. So. <laughs> You know, it is what it is. Man. All right. I gotta, I gotta go Keith pick up Thurman. Breakfast, he's he's going to go pick up his up. pancakes. Don't eat too many pancakes, bro. <laughs> that was Keith Thurman. We thank him so much uh, for talking to us over here at Fight Up TV. Take it easy, guys.